So this is what we're going to spend our time on today. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, work with exponentials and logarithms uh, throughout this course, so I just want to make sure that we know how to apply the rules. So let's so move on to problem one, part A, e to the minus ln of two. All right, what's that equal to? Yeah? How did you get that? Um, the e, the natural log cancels, and then the negative two exponent becomes a limit. How do you get a negative two exponent? Maybe I did this wrong. <laughs> um, I canceled the e to the negative log power to one. And then I had one to the negative two. Okay, so let's see what rules are we using here. So we had the rule that said you're trying to cancel the, the log. So the rule says if you have a log to the base a of something, it just cancels and you get the thing. Or in the e and ln version, e to the ln of something. Thing, right? So if that's what you want to do, you want to actually just cancel these. You can actually use that. There's something in the way that, yeah. Remove the negative as to be an exponent of 2. Yeah. So it would be 2 to the negative so 1. This one has a negative sign. There is something in front of the log. Notice that in the rule, there is nothing in front of the log, which means <coughs> this rule does not apply, at least not yet. You first need to make this look like that in order to apply the rule. So we do know a way to actually get that out of the way. We can actually move this up into the power by another rule. So what we can do is this is e to the ln of 2 to the minus 1 power. And that we can do by a rule that said n log to the base a of x you can actually take that n from in front of the power of x. Now, in this form, this rule applies. I can directly just kind of cancel the e and the ln, and I would be left with um, 2 to the minus 1, or 1 half. So 1 half is the answer, and that's how you get to it. Moral of the story, of course, is the rules slash formulas that I give you. This is applied calculus, so I'm never going to really prove any rule to you. Um, you do that in, uh, I would do that in Math 1206, so if you're ever interested in where anything I talk about comes from, you can probably watch my lectures for that class. But if I give you a formula, uh, you want to think of these there are templates. Pay attention to detail and follow them exactly. Meaning, <coughs> if there's something that's in a position that in the rule there's nothing in that position, it means you cannot apply the rule. Um, you have to manipulate things before you can apply the rule. Um, a what you have must fit them exactly. In order to apply them. So this is a general rule, not just for this class, but pretty much for any math class. Uh, every time a rule is de derived or a formula is derived, that now is your template for any, it's like a stamp that you can put over any other problem that looks the same way. Um, so basically, last class I gave you a bunch of rules for exponentials and logarithms. Um, so what you want to do is you want to have a separate book or a separate sheet where every time I give you formulas, you write it down on that sheet and that's now your formula sheet. So every time you're doing homework or you're practicing or <coughs> studying, you have that sheet beside you. <coughs> 
every time you want to do something and you want to, okay, how do I solve this problem? What is the next step I want to take? There's going to be a rule on that sheet that says you're allowed to take this step in this specific way. And you're going to look at, okay, that's what I do. What's the next step? That's what I do. And you're always just looking back at the rules. The rules tell you what the legal steps to take are. And you cannot make a move unless there's a rule that tells you to make the move. And it's, it's like that. It's like playing a chess game. Right? The rule says the pieces move this way. In math, you kind of do it the same way. At this level, math is pretty much like <coughs> a game. That you just move pieces around according to some rule that I give you. Um, and that's how you kind of want to think about it. And whether or not you actually understand what NMVS all means, it doesn't even matter. Just doing it, looking at it that way, you have, you're an A math student now. It's, it's just pieces that you're moving around according to some rule that I give you. Um, and so make sure that you know the rules, which means you have them written down in one spot, you're always looking at them, and, know, and make sure that in the beginning, literally every time you take a step, every time you write a new line in an equation, Make sure you can justify why that line is true. I can write from this, I can move here because of this reason. From this line, I can move here. Because of that reason. And this just in this case it's a e to the ln of the n equals the thing. So this rule allows me to go from this step to that step. What rule allows me to go from this step to that step? Well, there's a law of exponents that says if I have a negative power, I can move one over, right? And seriously, every single line you will ever write down in this class, there is a very specific reason, which is going to be given by a formula that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you every rule you need to know, right? There's going to be a very specific reason why you can move from one step to the other. And your job is to make sure you know that reason, right? You don't want to, um, like, I'm not always going to write this, but sometimes when I'm writing down an example, a lot of times students focus on the example, but they never really focus on why was that step made in the example. Your job is to, every time you see me work out a problem, you need to make sure you go home and you know, why was this step allowed? Why was that step allowed? Why was that step allowed? And if you think, well, that sounds pretty annoying and time consuming, you'd be right. Right? That's the right way to do it. Eventually, if you do that often enough, your, mem your long-term memory is going to kick in and you're not going to need to do it anymore. It's going to come like second nature to you. In the same way that you can talk without thinking about grammar rules, right? No one ever does that, right? So if you're in a math class, or if you're in a test or a quiz, and you're like, what did Javon do again? You already messed up. But you should never be at that level because you should be at the point where it's just natural for you to follow the rules. It just flows. But how you get to that point is in the beginning, very slowly, why am I allowed to do this? Why am I allowed to do that? What's the next correct step? Why was that the next correct step? What rule says I could make this step? Do that. Once you do that, and eventually, it'll just start to come like second nature. And then you'll get it right. What you don't want to do is you feel like this is the yeah, you don't want to, uh, I feel like, I think Javon kind of did some of this in that class. You know that class, like, the second week of class, like, the, you know, the first five minutes he did? No, the moment you start to try to remember something like that, you're going to mess up. When you're anxious, your, your memory is not going to work that well. You want to have the, the rules internalized. <coughs> um, that being said, you should be aware that there are more than one ways to skin a cat. I could have applied a different list of rules and get to the same place, or <coughs> let's say I have e to the L2. There's another rule I could have done. I could have instead done this, right? Because I realized having that negative here is a problem because there's no rule that has that there. But I can do that. Why am I allowed to do that? Well, there's a rule that says that. Here I have a minus 1 times an ln2. I can actually write it like this. I can factor off one of the powers. Now inside the parentheses, the e and the ln cancel because that looks like a rule. And so that leaves me inside the parentheses will simplify to 2. And I can do that because there's a rule that says e to the ln of anything 
it's just a thing. And I apply that inside the parentheses. Now, 2 to the minus 1, well, that's a half. How do I know that's a half? Because there is a rule that says it's a half. That's how I know it's a half. Not because I feel like it, not because I saw Javon do it that one time. There's a rule that allows me to do that. There's another way to do it, right? Or, <coughs> like if I have e to the minus ln2, I can think of this as, well, that's just 1 over e to the ln2. How do I know that? Well, there's a rule that says if I have a negative power, I can put 1 over the thing to the positive power. Now, how do I simplify that? Well, the e and the ln are right beside each other. They cancel. Why? There's a rule. There's a rule that says if I have e to the ln of something, there's nothing in between the e and the ln. They will cancel each other and give me the thing. And so that leaves me with 1 over 2. I can get a half that way. Multiple ways to skin a cat, but only few of them are valid ways to skin a cat. And you just need to know, every time you're making a step, there's a very specific reason why I'm making this step. Why am I allowed to do that? Okay, we got a lot out of that one problem. But it's, it's a lot of important, uh, just uh, soft skills, let's say, that will really help you to, you know, you don't want math class to be something like, oh, math is just hard, or, you know, you kind of get lucky. You know, sometimes you're like, I think I did great on that test, and they do horribly. And sometimes, I think I did really bad on that test, and they do great. It's like it's like a shot in the dark for them. You don't want to be that person. Like, whether I do good or bad, it's up to the whims. The test was too hard. The drawn tests are too hard, man. It has nothing to do with it. You don't know the rules. That's why you do badly. If you're getting something wrong, you need to check this. Do I know the rules? Why did I make that step? Why was I allowed to do that? So, and <coughs> when I show you multiple ways to do one problem, you don't have to learn all the ways. Just whichever way jives with you first, just do it that way. If, if this was the way you saw it, yeah, forget these two and just always do it that way, right? But whatever way you do, make sure I know a specific reason why I'm allowed to make this step. That's, that's the... That's the mindset you want to have here. The rules are the templates. Everything you do must be sanctioned. Nothing is random, nothing goes by feeling. B. Uh, B says E to the ln of ln F E cubed. Okay, what do we do? Yeah? Um, you cross out the E and the LN. Which one? The first one. Okay, so E to the LN, those two yeah. cancel. You can bring down the LN, E to the third. Then there's the, the rule where it's LN, there's an E, next, like the subscript E mm -hmm. and next to the LN. That means that the answer will be three. Right, because there's a rule that says if I have log to the base A, of a to the x, then the answer is just the x. It's so like this is like the x, and the e is like the a in that rule. And so the answer just simplifies to the 3. You can also just think of it as the ln and e cancel each other once they're right beside each other, and you just get the 3. Again, I, I, said, I said which one because you had the option Right, so if you have e to the ln of ln of e to the 3, you could have canceled these ones first. That's also a valid step because of that rule. And so this is just e to the ln of the 3, as you can here. And then you can cancel these because of the first rule that I wrote down. And then you can get to the 3. <coughs> Right? Either way, you should get to three, but there should be a valid reason why you're making each step. And this one follows because this e to the ln of anything is just the thing. 
and that allows me to go from this step to that step. So that simplifies to three. sense uh, like like ln yeah x squared minus five y can you okay but let's actually deal with this first because that's an important thing that is often misunderstood uh, let's say I have a log of something minus log of something else Am I allowed to factor out that log? Oh, uh, no. no. No, right? That's not the rule. What does the rule actually say? What are you supposed to do? Yeah? Um, it's a division. It's a division. It's A divided by B. Right? So these are the questions, right? You're here. You're like, can I factor that? What do the rules say? Is there a rule that says you can factor? The answer is no. There is no such rule. There's a rule that says if you have two logs being subtracted, maybe I should not write that in red right there. I, there is a rule that says if I have two logs being subtracted, I can combine them via dividing the thing inside the log. It's also worth mentioning that there's nothing in front of the logs when I'm applying this rule, whereas there is something in front of this log here. So, no, you cannot factor out the log. Why? It doesn't obey a rule. There's no template that says I'm allowed to do this. <coughs> so this would be the incorrect step, but you need to know why that's the incorrect step. It's very important that you drill that in your brain, because what's going to happen is it just it reminds you of things that you've seen in math before. Like factoring is a big thing, right? You see 2x uh, minus 4. It's, it's very natural to factor out a 2, right? It's, it's something that in a different context, that would be the thing to do. So it makes sense to you on some level. Um, but that's what you have to look out for. Because the things that make sense to you on some level, if you're in a test and I go, five minutes left, and you freak out, what do you think your brain is going to do? The thing that kind of makes sense, that you, the first thing that comes to mind, you're just going to write it down. And that's how you get the test back. And I don't know what happened. I, I really understand the material professor. I don't understand. That's going to be me. That's, that's going to be me. Right. That, I'm telling you how to avoid that fate. Here's how you avoid that fate. Every, every single line you write down, what rule allowed me to make that, that, that step? Okay? If you can't think of a rule, it's wrong do something else. And eventually you'll train your brain into knowing, oh, that's right, that's wrong, that's right, that's wrong. And eventually you do that often enough, it'll, it'll automatically just give you the right answer at the first, at the first uh, uh, prompt. Okay, so going back, how do we move through? All of my ideas were now proven wrong. <laughs> All yeah. of them. You can make a natural Find natural log of y into a natural log of y to the same. So first thing to move up here. So this will be e to the ln of x squared minus ln of y to the fifth, then? Um, and then you can simplify it into the natural log of x squared over y to the fifth. Right, because that's the rule. Then? Um, and then using the rules in part a, the answer is x squared over y to the fifth. Right. These guys would cancel. And you have x squared over y to the fifth. That's the answer. Right. So this is because of the rule that says I'm allowed to bring things up into the power. This is because of the rule because the subtraction of logs is really log of the division. This cancels that because of this rule. Or Maybe you saw something else in the first place, which you could have seen. For example, you could notice that this is this divided by 
modified of ln of y. Why would that be the case? Because I know if I have something, a subtraction in the power, it just means I'm dividing things of the same base. So if I have e of something minus something, it means that it's e of that thing divided by e of the bottom thing. Now I'm allowed to take this 5 and move it up here. <coughs> so that'll be e to the ln of x squared over e to the ln of y to the fifth. Then I can apply that rule that says, oh, well, the e's and the ln's, whenever they're right inside each other like that, I can cancel them out. And so that leaves me with an x squared in the top and a y to the fifth in the bottom. You get to the same answer, all of be by a different method. So there, there are multiple ways to do this. Another way. Like different people see things different ways. As long as the way you see is valid, I don't particularly care. Um, so you could start with this e to the x squared minus 5 ln y. You can think of this as e to the ln of x squared times e to the minus 5 ln y. That's also correct. This would be e to the ln of x squared <coughs> times e to the ln of y to the minus 5. And you can cancel the e's and the ln's. This is x squared times y to the minus fifth power, which gives you x squared over y to the fifth, once again. So as long as you follow the rules, you'll always end up in the right place. Whichever rule you happen to see first, it's OK. Just make sure the rule is valid. And make sure the rule you're thinking about fits on top of what you're looking at, kind of like a template. Because right, here I was using the rule that if x to the a plus b is equal to x to the a times x to the b. Right, because I think of this as ln of x squared plus a minus 5 ln of x squared, and then I can split it up by a multiplication. Expand this. <coughs> Let's log up something complicated. How do we expand it? Expand into a sum of simpler logs. What do you do? Okay, so you distributed the radical like this, which is fine, and then you split it up like that. Okay, then. Okay. Someone help out? Yeah. So the square root is to the one half, so you can put the one half in front of the natural. So the square root, I would think of that instead as a one-half power. And I can move that half power down in front of the natural log. Okay. We can still go further. this a little bit less writing, I can just keep the one half on the outside here. <coughs> Which I, I could get that from uh, just thinking of this as just ln of x squared minus 1 over x times x plus 3 cubed to the one half from the beginning, bring that half down in front. And 
then expand this one into a subtraction, and I would get to this line. So that's another option there. That's how we saw it first. But assuming we get to this line, how do we continue? <coughs> yes. Um, expand the multiplication <coughs> into addition. This one? OK. And then, so what would that give us here? Ln x plus ln x plus 3 to the third. And then you can bring the 3 down in front of the ln. Right. There's something off, though. Yeah? You have to distribute the negative. In the parentheses here. That negative is going to distribute. So we have one half, give myself a little bit more space here, one half ln of x squared minus one minus ln of x minus, you can bring the three down. Now what? Pretty good so far, but we can get simpler. <coughs> of squares. That's actually x minus 1 times x plus 1. So that should be something that jumps out at you here. And so that can be expanded as a sum. ln of x minus 1 plus ln of x plus 1 minus ln of x minus 3 ln of x plus 3. That's By the way, why would such a skill be necessary? Expanding logs is useful for calculus. Um, in the sense that we're going to talk about things like integrals and derivatives uh, in this class. And usually, I'll ask you something like, oh, differentiate this logarithm function, or integrate the you're not going to learn how to integrate logs here. You're going to learn how to differentiate them both. But whenever the question is something like that, do calculus with this logarithm, expanding it is always going to make your life easier. So whenever calculus is the goal, you want to do some integrals or derivatives, you tend to want to expand logarithms. <coughs> That's why it's an important skill. <coughs> now the next skill, combining into a single logarithm, is also useful, but for a different reason. How would you combine that? start you have to like pop the third the to the third on the x and like the log second like down in front of the log. So we'll move this three down? Yes please. Okay. So log <laughs> so polite. Yes please. Okay. And then because they all have the same base, can't you just like start multiplying and dividing with like the rules? Okay. So uh well, no. no. If you if you wanted to do that, then you won't want the three in front of here. Okay. No. But there is something you can do here, though. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to phone a friend. I'm stuck. <laughs> Notice here, you do have all the same things. Yeah. Right. So can I just do my operations? Like you I can do subtract algebra. and add. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So it's like you have a minus three a plus four a, right? <laughs> yeah. One apple minus three apple plus four apples. You get two apples. Perfect. So that would be that. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. You don't have to go further than that. Could bring the two up, but it, uh, that's nicer. Oh, cool beans. Yeah. Uh, you could have, if you wanted to do your multiplication division thing, oh. applying the log rules, you. you could actually 
In order to do that, you don't want anything in front of the logarithm. So the first thing you want to do is actually get this 4 and move it up. Now you have log of something minus log of something. Well, that's just log of the division. This is a key. And now you have log of something plus log of something. That's just log of the multiplication. So I'm going to take this times that. Now once you start simplifying here, this cancels that two times, this will cancel to that two times, you end up with log to the base two of x squared, which you can bring the two <coughs> in front and get to log to the base two of x. So you can get to the answer that way as well. Now, if you have a bunch of logs spread out, why would you even want to combine them? Combining logs. Is useful for solving equations. So the goal is going to be important. You know you want to do calculus. I want to differentiate something. I want to integrate something. You're going to tend to want to expand the logarithm. If you know, I want to solve an equation or I want to simplify algebraically, you're going to combine the logarithms. So you expand or combine for different reasons. So you just know what those reasons are. Solve some equations. E to the x equals 12. How do I solve for x? Yeah. You can plug both sides into ln. But which um, you tend I'd say something like log both sides is how I express that idea. So if I'm working out something on the board, I'm like, oh, you just log both sides. Blah, blah, blah. This is what I mean. Plug both sides into a logarithm. Because if two things are equal, then their logarithms are equal. Log is a one-to-one -one function. Um, sometimes I might not even write down this line. I'll just write over what I have here, just write in the ln. Um, so now, why would you do that? Because on the left side, we have a rule that will tell me that those two are going to cancel. <coughs> so that will give us with an x equals ln 12. That's your answer. So you can log both sides. This comes from the fact that we, we spoke about last time. Logs and exponentials are inverse functions. So you can use one to cancel the other. Kind of like how addition and subtraction, you can use one to cancel, or multiplication and division. They, they, they undo each other. So if I have an exponential, I have an e to the x, and I don't want it to get rid of it, use the log to the base e. And the log will get rid of the exponential. So I can log both sides. By the way, you can notice that it also follows directly from law 1. Right, we, we, law 1 said that if I had log to the base a of b equals c, it means that I can take a raised to the power c and get b. Or in the ln version, it means that ln of b equals c means that I can take the base e raised to the power c to get b. And so I can jump from e to the c equals b must mean that c is equal to ln of b. And I can just solve for that. Although once things start getting too complicated and too big, it's, it's hard, it becomes harder to see law one. So like log both sides would probably be um, in practice what you want to think about. So if I have an exponential, I don't want it. I want to get rid of an exponential to be able to solve for something in the power. Log both sides. I can use logs to get rid of exponentials, and I can use exponentials to get rid of logs. Bringing us to the next problem. If I have ln of x equals 9, how do I solve for x? Basically, what I just said, you can actually 
plug both sides into an exponential. Or I could say something like e both sides, which makes no sense grammatically or technically. It makes no sense other than as a cue of what I want to do. Or you want to exponentiate both sides. So there's a log that I want to get rid of. I can cancel it by throwing both sides into the corresponding exponential. So that means your x would be left over with e to the ninth power. <coughs> right? Again, also follows directly from the definition. But when things start getting bigger, it's harder to see that. So you, you think of, oh, there's an ln. Get rid of the ln. How? E. Oh, there's an e. How do I get rid of it? Ln. Right? The log we will always cancel the exponential. And vice versa. <coughs> okay, C. E to the 5 minus 3x equals 4. How do I solve that? Log both sides. A ln in front of this, a ln in front of that. This side cancels, and we get 5 minus 3x equals ln of 4. Then? Okay, uh, this comes up, so I'm just going to warn you. Uh, you cannot combine these. It's a very common thing. You see, say, oh, do you subtract the 4 and the 5? No, you cannot subtract the 4 and the 5, because the 4 is inside of the logarithm, and the 5 is not. The 5 is something that you subtracted it separately. So it's ln of 4, ln of 4. Even though I don't write the parentheses there, it's kind of implied. Whatever is right beside the ln, <coughs> um, that's inside the ln. The minus 5 is separate. So don't combine the 4 and the 5. Um, what you can also do is I can, to get the negative out of the denominator, which it just looks ugly, it's not necessary really, uh, you can just take Multiply by minus 1 over minus 1, and that will give you something like 5 minus ln 4 over 3. Any questions on that one? This one. Mm -hmm. um, you want to get all the x's on one side, so you would add the ln x to ln 2x plus 1. And then you can um, combine them so the addition becomes multiplication. Sides, I guess. Well, there's already an ln. E. e both sides. Cancels on this side. We have x times 2x plus 1 equals e squared. Then? Then you distribute the x. And then you would subtract the e squared, and you would have to do like the quadratic. It's a quadratic equation. So 
Remember that if you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then it means that your x is equal to minus b plus or minus squared of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And here you have a equals 2, your b equals 1, your c equals minus b squared. That's a quadratic equation. It has a certain form that you should be familiar with. And so this means that your x is going to be minus b plus or minus the square root of b <coughs> squared minus 4 times a times c, this is a plus, all over 2 times a. Notice here, as I mentioned earlier, combining logarithms, it's very convenient for solving an equation. Because you combine everyone to one log, then exponentiate both sides, and it, it gets rid of the logarithm. And then you can use previous techniques to actually solve that equation, depending on what it looks like. So this one's going to be similar. It's right? going to combine the logs here by multiplying the pieces here. Then what? Are ready to this one? Hmm? Can you use um, law one? Law is, one, um, so we just rearranging it. So the since there's no number on log, wouldn't it just be like log ten? So ten to the one. Right. So if I don't write the base, that's ten, and so I can like ten to the first ten power. Both sides doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Right? Or you can apply law 1 directly. 10 raised to that power should give you that number, but either way, you would end up with uh, x times x minus 3 equals 10. Expand this. That's another quadratic. We know how to deal with those. Bring everything to one side. And you try to factor. If it doesn't factor, use quadratic formula, but uh, this one factors. x equals 5 or x equals minus 2. That's the answer. It's not the answer. <laughs> What's wrong? Yeah? Can you take the log of a negative number? You can't take the log of a negative number. You'll notice here that <coughs> this one has to be rejected because if you set x equals minus 2 in the original, you'll end up with, uh, right here, log of minus 2 plus log of minus 5 equals 1, which makes no sense because logarithms, remember from last time, look like that. They don't exist for negative numbers. Um, but you'll notice that if you plug in x equals 5, that one actually does work. If you look at x equals 5, that would mean you have log 5 <coughs> plus log 2. That's log of 5 times 2. That's log of 10. So it's log to the base 10 of 10. That's just 1, which is the answer. So um, that's your answer. So exponentials are nice, they work everywhere, the domain is all real numbers, but for <coughs> logarithms, the domain isn't all real numbers. So once you find the input values, you have to check, does it actually make sense with the original problem? That's always going to be uh, an option. Strictly speaking, we should have checked that this both signs actually work here, because the negative sign would give you a negative uh, number here. So it's up to you to actually check. You probably should check that. I didn't check it. 
But you always have to make sure that it works in the original uh, logarithm. Sides. Of course, choose base 2 because the, the base over here is 2. So um, that will cancel. And you would get uh, <coughs> x squared plus 1 equals log to the base 2 of 5. Then you'd solve. So you have x squared is equal to log to the base 2 of to the base 2 of 5 <coughs> minus 1. And so you're x is going to be, well, plus or minus the radical of that. <coughs> now, does that act answer actually make sense? Can you actually square with that? Do we know that this is positive or non-negative? Well, one thing you can notice here is that log to the base 2 of 5 is actually bigger than log to the base 2 of 4. And what's log to the base 2 of 4? It's 2, right? So this is actually larger than 2 minus 1, which is 1. So it is pos positive, and it actually does make sense. So that, that is your answer. <coughs> So we'll begin calculus next time. Uh, but knowing how to deal with exponentials and logarithms is going to be something important. So I'll see you guys next week. In which case, you'll have a quiz on this stuff on Tuesday. So enjoy your weekend.